Hi, Dave and Janice from No Fix Address back with you. Today we're going to show you our Zizo folding bikes. And we'll take them for a ride in the Everglades to check out some alligators and birds and various wildlife. We decided to look at bicycles as another option for getting some exercise. Um, you know, we go out and we go on hikes and walk and running, but we just wanted something else to do as a different way of seeing what was out there to see. Um, and we don't have a lot of space in the trailer. We have our two motorcycles in the back, and because of that, we don't have a lot of extra space to be able to store full-size bicycles. So we thought we'd take a look at folding bikes and see what we could find. We also didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on them because we didn't know whether we were going to like <laughs> like bicycling because it's been about 40 years since we were on on them. Anyway. Let's face it, we're motorcycle riders. We're not <laughs> used to pedaling. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, I did uh, start doing some Google searching to find out what's out there and what kind of prices uh, you have to pay for these various bikes. And uh, man, you can pay a lot for a folding bicycle. <laughs> We ended up settling on a company called Zizo um, because they, the bikes seem to be fairly well built and not crazy expensive. So a good balance between quality and price, we thought. Um, so we decided to go ahead and order a couple of them. Um, they come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So we thought not a huge amount of risk to do that and uh, they ship them to wherever you are and so we pulled the trigger and made the order. We ended up buying a model called VIA, V-I-A, and uh, it was sort of a middle of the road price point and weight. There's a correspondence between the amount you pay and the weight of the bike, inverse proportional. Yes. Uh, the lighter the bike, the more expensive it is. So we uh, we ended up buying these Via bikes. They're 27 pounds each, which is not too bad at all. Nope. Uh, easily loaded into the truck, easily carried. Um, so we're so far pretty happy with them. Yes, definitely very happy with them. Uh, the bikes that we bought were also reconditioned. Right. Um, so somebody bought them, tried them out, returned them presumably on the 30-day guaranteed return program, and because of that, we <clears throat> we got some money off. Yeah, they're certified reconditioned, which means they have put them back into 100% good as new condition, and uh, they come with a full warranty, just like you're buying, as if you were buying uh, a non-reconditioned bike. Um, there's just a couple of minor paint scuffs on them, so all yeah. we could see. Uh, so we're really happy with that aspect of it as well, because uh, we saved some money buying the reconditioned bikes. So in this video, uh, we'll show you the bikes that we bought and uh, how you unfold them, fold them, give you some thoughts on, some of our thoughts on what we like and don't like about the bikes and uh, take them out for a ride. Yeah. That should be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully uh, riding a bike is just like riding a bike. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> because it's been a while, like Jen said. So uh, yeah, let's get into these bikes and uh, show you what they're all about. The Via is kind of a mid-priced bike in Zizo's lineup. Uh, it lists for $330. We paid $270, I believe it was, because we bought certified refurbished bikes. And both of the bikes we got as refurbished were in excellent condition. I presume somebody had bought them and didn't like them or whatever and sent them back. So there was just a couple of minor scuffs on them. That was it. Otherwise, they're in perfect condition. 
There were some slight differences between the two bikes we got, primarily the seats. This, the seat on this one, which ended up being mine, is a butt buster of a seat, very tiny, not very comfortable. The other seat, uh, and I'll show it to you here, is wider and more comfortable. So this is the Zizo Via in the folded configuration. We'll uh, first show you how it's unfolded and then we'll walk you through the features of the bike. There's a magnet that holds the two halves together, which is quite nice. So it's just a matter of unfolding and there's a latch in the middle that needs to be latched and then there's a catch on it as well to prevent it from unfolding. Unfold the pedals. Now we're going to raise the handlebars up to riding position. And latch that. Now we need to move the brakes into the riding position there from rotated up. So you just unlatch them, rotate them to whatever position is comfortable for you. And then you can adjust the height of the handlebars with a simple lever there. And finally, we need to adjust the seat. So it's a matter of raising it up, rotating in 180 degrees, and latching it into position. Then after double checking all of the latches to make sure everything is latched and secure, you're ready to go riding. So folding the bike up is very straightforward, pretty much the reverse of the unfolding operation. We're going to start by rotating the handlebars so that the brakes are pointing upwards. And we're going to raise the handlebars to their full height and latch that. Now we can fold the handlebar assembly down. Now next we're going to fold in the pedals. And we're going to rotate the cranks so that the left side pedal is horizontal and facing forward. Now we're going to lower the seat fully and rotate it 180 degrees. Now finally we're going to fold the bike in half. And here you'll see the magnets down in there that hold the two halves together for transportation. And that's it. I'll give you a quick demonstration of how we put it into the carry bag now. We just start by laying the bag flat on the ground with the bottom flat. Set the bike on it. Lift the two sides up and zip it closed. It's as simple as that. Our intention is to transport the bikes in the back of our truck between our fifth wheel hitch and the front of the box. The bag has carry handles for over your shoulder and uh, it also has a strap on the side for, so if you're lifting it into the trunk of your car or for us into the back of our truck it makes it easy to uh, lift and carry. The bike is equipped with a seven-speed Shimano tourney derailleur, uh, which is quite smooth from an operating point of view. We like them. Um, so just seven gears, there's what they look like. And apparently all those gears are stainless steel. One of the things I like about the handlebar adjustment is there are numbers and lines on there so that you can return it to whatever setting you uh, find most comfortable. 
Unfortunately, the same does not hold true for the seat height adjustment. There are no lines on there, so we're probably going to end up marking it with a white marker or nail polish or something like that. The handle grips are quite comfortable, we have found. They have this nice flat part here, which you can rotate to be comfortable to lean on with the palm of your hand. So we found that to be quite good. The tires are 20 by 1.95, so 20 inch wheels on this bike. And although those are small wheels, we found them to be uh, easy from a rolling resistance point of view and the bike, although it's small, is easily adjustable for some of your hour height. Janice is 5'8 and I'm about 5'10 and uh, we find them sized perfect for us and I'm sure if you were even taller they would still be fine. To unfold the pedals, it's just a matter of pulling this little lever in here and then it can rotate. Quite a nice design. I should mention that we added these bottle holders. The mounting points are standard spacing. The screws came with the bike, so it was an easy installation. Let's talk a bit about the differences between the Via, which is this bike, and the Campo, which is the next model down that we were considering. Uh, there's a slight difference in weight, and that is primarily due to the fact that this bike has more aluminum and less steel. I think it's only a one pound difference, maybe two pounds, I can't remember. But uh, nevertheless, less steel, more aluminum. So the Via weighs 27 pounds, which is not bad. You can carry that with one hand. Other differences, the Via comes with mud guards whereas the Campo does not. The spike also comes with a kickstand and the Campo does not. The other big difference is that the Campo does not have height adjustment on the handlebars, which the Via does, and we think that is very important, so it was worth it for us to pay the little extra. So we've uh, made it about halfway around the loop to the observation tower. It's about seven miles so far. Seven miles, yeah. yep. And uh, so far so good, still alive. <laughs> haven't fallen off our bikes yet. It was actually pretty good, seeing as we haven't been on mics in probably, I don't know, 20, <laughs> 30, 40 years? Might be at least that long, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, pretty cool uh, ride here so far. Yeah. <laughs> lots of uh, birds, lots of gators. Lots of gators, yeah. We've, I haven't been counting, which uh, is, I guess, unusual for me because I'm a retired accountant and I love to count. Uh, but we've probably seen 25 gators and I can't imagine what it would be like 
if it was sunny out. It's cloudy today. It's warm, but it's cloudy. And so the gators like to stay in the water um, to keep warm. Uh, but there were still yeah, quite a number of them. Fair was number out. Just one of them lying on the uh, pavement itself. Uh, but we understand that on sunny days they're all over the pavement. Yeah, yeah I gotta ride your bikes around them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. And the birds were quite tame. Yeah. As well. there, yes, that's the other thing too. The the birds are used to people being around, so they all they feel safe. They feel safe, and they don't fly away. So you can get up fairly close to them, uh, respectful distance, obviously, but fairly close and get some nice pictures. Mm. Uh, yeah. So let's just check out the observation tower. Yep. We're off. This is Boro Pit Trail. It's a 350 meter little trail just off the pathway to the observation deck. Does it keep going? Are we at the end of it? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think we're at the end. <laughs> no, not exactly what I was expecting. Get you a comfort seat. Yes, I need a big. Ass, I need a big ass seat, <laughs> about a foot and a half wide, I think. But well, we did 15 miles, and this is. I need a tractor seat. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. But I think for me, this is probably the first time I've been in a, on a bike in 40 years. Um, our bikes are foldable, which is great. Yeah, they perform quite well. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with them. They're seven speed, which was awesome because the road we took back was a windy road, so 50% of it was going into some very strong winds. Yeah. So it was nice to be able to go down to second, first. third, first. <laughs> 
Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, for uh, 20 inch wheels on it, they're yeah. really small, but it still perform quite well. Obviously, yeah. you're not going off roading with them, but on the streets and sidewalks and paved trails like this, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm real happy with it. Yeah. So, where are we headed now, Dave? Time for a beer. <laughs> Time for a beer. Wow. <laughs>